The explosion of medical knowledge and technology has led to a dramatic increase in specialization of medical care, providers, and sites. One aspect of this is that care for complex problems has become increasingly regionalized. One downside of this centralization is that the relative ability to properly treat some classes of patients at non-centers has declined. A prime example of this specialization is neonatal care. Newborn medicine has become highly specialized. One problem is that many small hospitals, which are perfectly well qualified to deliver babies, are not set up to properly care for seriously ill infants. This has led to a dramatic increase in interhospital transport. Unfortunately, sick babies can decline astonishingly quickly. The goal of our system is to provide continuous, real-time medical telepresence that will allow experts at the best neonatal care facilities to participate in the care of babies, both while the baby is at the hospital in which it was born and, should transport be necessary, during that critical period of time when the baby is between hospitals. We believe the deployment of this system will lead to better patient outcomes, improved care while at the community hospital, improved care during transport, and better preparation at the receiving hospital so that urgent care can be provided immediately upon arrival. Our system has three components. An instrumented environment in which the baby can be cared for and transported, a communication subsystem that provides a bi-directional, real-time video link between regional neonatal care centers, community hospitals, and the vehicles used to transport babies, and an application that facilitates collaboration amongst those in charge of caring for the infant. The most technologically challenging component of the system to build was the communication subsystem. It is built on top of the commercial cellular data networks. Using the cellular data networks poses a number of challenges. These networks provide limited bandwidth, they suffer from a high packet loss rate, and they are notoriously unstable. Our solution is to multiplex the streams over multiple cellular channels and exploit carrier diversity. Here's a video of one of our test runs. The first thing we see is the transport team loading the isolate into the truck. Here is a physician from Children's Hospital sitting at the application that runs at the hospital. There are three cameras, two focused on the baby and one on the vital signs monitor. The doctors can switch back and forth among these cameras. There is, unfortunately, a slight delay when the camera is changed to allow the buffers to refill so that the video provided can continue to be smooth. The doctor is also visible on the user interface in the ambulance, which allows the doctor to demonstrate procedures that he or she might wish the team in the ambulance to follow. Here's a video from a different test run. This baby is approximately two months old and considerably larger than those babies we expect to be transported. Notice, however, that the motion, as perceived by the doctor, is quite normal and the resolution perfectly adequate for diagnostic purposes. Frequently, the physicians will observe something that they wish to refer to another physician. They can save video. Typically, what the doctor will do is want to save video of something he or she has previously seen. So the doctor is allowed to save the previous minute or two minutes or five minutes of video. Video is saved on a web server at the hospital, which can then be accessed by anyone with access to the hospital's network. It's also possible to zoom in or out. Doctors are likely to do this to inspect wounds or skin lesions, perhaps the eyes, things of that nature. One of the more popular features amongst the doctors is the ability to take a snapshot and email that snapshot to a collaborator for a second opinion. In our tests, we discovered that our system was considerably more reliable than cellular telephone communications. We also discovered that the level of noise in the ambulance, particularly when the respirator was on, was sufficiently high that oral communication could be a challenge. And the doctors and the transport team began to rely increasingly on the instant messenger facility for communications. In conjunction with our collaborators at Boston's Children's Hospital, we have done several simulated transport tests. 
the physicians found the system easy to use and postulated that it now provides all the facilities they need to make an impact on patient care. Premature births account for 75% of neonatal deaths and 50% of neurological disorders. Despite these dire numbers, it is important to remember that even for very premature babies, excellent outcomes are possible with the proper care. Our work should help more babies receive care that will lead to excellent outcomes.